Esoteric Course of Kabbalah by Samuel on Veor. Part 1. Author's Preface. Adorable and immortal beings, greetings and blessings. There are two types of Kabbalists, intellectual Kabbalists and intuitive Kabbalists. The intellectual Kabbalists are black magicians, the intuitive Kabbalists are white magicians. Many times, the sidereal gods answer our questions by showing us a tarot card, then we must intuitively understand the answer given to us. Intuitive Kabbalists comprehend what is reserved for them just by glancing at a tarot card. This is a book of practical Christification. This is a book of transcendental esotericism and absolutely practical. We do not theorize here. This work is 100% practical. Many students long for their Christification, but they do not know where to start, because they do not know the clue, the secret. Here we give to the student, the clue, the secret, the key. Here you have it. Thirsty lovers of the truth. Now practice, you are not alone. We love you profoundly, thus when you are treading the path of the razor's edge, you will be internally assisted by us, the brethren of the temple. In this course we deliver the clue of resurrection. We have ripped the veil of the sanctuary. Here you have all the secrets. Here are all the clues of Christification. Here is written the doctrine that the Adorable taught in secret to his humble disciples. The Adorable will remain with us until the end of times. This is his doctrine. Here you have it. Study it and practice it. Introduction. Children of man, do you want to enter into the ineffable bliss of nirvana? Do you want to become gods? Do you want to convert yourselves into Christs? Do you want to liberate yourselves from the wheel of birth and death? Here we will give you the clue of sexual magic. What else do you want? Let's see the existing relationship between the ten Sephiroth with the first tarot cards. The seven planets of the solar system are the seven Sephiroth. And the thrice spiritual sun is the Sephirothic crown. These Sephiroth live and palpitate within our consciousness, and we must learn to manipulate and combine them in the marvelous laboratory of our interior universe. These ten Sephiroth are Ketherdia crown, the equilibrated power, the magician, the first arcanum of the tarot whose primeval hieroglyphic is represented by a man. Chakma, wisdom, the popus of the tarot. Occult wisdom, the priestess. The second card of the tarot, the moon, primeval hieroglyphic is represented by the mouth of man. Bina, intelligence, the planet Venus, third card of the tarot, the empress, primeval hieroglyphic is represented by a hand in the attitude of grasping. These three Sephiroth are the Sephirothic crown. The other seven inferior Sephiroth come in the following order. Chisid, Mercy, Jupiter, the Divine Eye, Atman, Primeval Hieroglyphic is represented by a breast. The fourth tarot card, the Emperor. Gabura, Severity, the fifth card of man, the Pope or the Hierophant of the tarot, Mars, the Warrior of Ares. Tiferet, Beauty, Venus of Taurus, the Love of the Holy Spirit, the Causal Body of the Man, the sixth card of the tarot, the Lover. Netzaku, Victory, Justice of the Arcanum the seventh card of the tarot. The chariot, Saturn. Had a glory, Mercury of Gemini, the eighth card of the tarot, the eternity of all. Yesid the foundation, the son of Leo, the ninth card of the tarot. The hermit. Malkut, kingdom, the entire universe, Mary or Virgo, nature. These ten Sephiroth live within our being and are our inner solar system. The tarot is intimately related with esoteric astrology and with initiation. Arcanum 10. This is the first hour of Apollonius. The study of transcendental. Occultism. Arcanum 11. This is the second hour of Apollonius. Power. The abysses of fire. The astral virtues form a circle through the dragons. And the fire, study of the occult forces. Arcanum 12. Third hour of Apollonius. The serpents, the channels, and the fire. Sexual alchemy. The work with Kundalini, sexual magic. Arcanum 13, death. The fourth hour of Apollonius. 
The neophyte will wander at night among the sepulchres and will experience the horror of the visions he will deliver himself to magic and to Gothia. This means the disciple will be attacked by millions of black magicians in the astral plane. Those tenebrious magicians will attempt to move the disciple away from the luminous path. Arcanum 14, The Two Urns Divine Magnetism and Human Magnetism The Superior Waters of Heaven During this time, the disciple learns to be pure and chaste, because he understands the value of his seminal fluid. Arcanum 15, The Electrical Hurricane, Typhon Baphomet The Sixth Hour of Apollonius Here it is necessary to stay quiet, still, because of fear. This signifies the terrible trial of the Guardian of the Threshold, before which much valor is necessary in order to conquer, defeat it. Arcanum 16, The Fulminated Tower Seventh Hour of Apollonius the fire comforts the animated beings and if any priest, purified enough, steals it and then he projects it and if he mixes it with the holy oil and then consecrates it, he will achieve the curing of all diseases simply by applying it to the affected part. The initiate can see here his material fortune threatened and his businesses fail. Arcanum 17, The Star of Hope The Eighth Hour of Apollonius Arcanum 18, The Star of the Magicians the ninth hour of Apollonius. The astral virtues of the elements, of the seed of every kind. Study of the minor mysteries, the ninth arches by the student have to ascend. Arcanum 19, the resplendent light. The tenth hour of Apollonius. The doors of the sky are opened, and the man leaves the lethargy. This is the number ten of the second great initiation of the major mysteries that permits the initiate to travel in the etheric body. This is the wisdom of John the Baptist. Arcanum 20, The Awakening of the Dead. The eleventh hour of Apollonius. The angels, the cherubims, and the seraphims fly with rumors of wings. There is rejoicing in the sky, awakening on the earth, and the sun that raises. Adam. This process belongs to the great initiations of major mysteries where only the terror of the law reigns. Arcanum 21, the twelfth hour of Apollonius. The Towers of Fire Unease. This is the triumphant entrance into the limitless bliss of Nirvana, where either the master dresses himself with the resplendent robe of Dharmasea, or he renounces the bliss of Nirvana for the love of humanity and converts himself into a bodhisattva of compassion, into a savior of the poor bereaved humanity, into another wedge of the guardian wall raised with the blood of the martyrs. Samyak Sambudo, master of perfection, renounced nirvana because of his love for humanity. The perfect Buddhas dress with the glory of Dharmasaya, they are not able to help man nor humankind anymore, because nirvana is to forget the world and men forever. The Bodhisattvas, Kwan Shireen, Tashisni, Buddha, and the Christ irradiate their light over the bereaved humanity. Samael on Veor. Adorable and immortal being, salutations and adorations to you beloved disciples now we start this course of secret Kabbalah. We will study the 22 major arcana of the tarot. This course, therefore, will have 22 lectures. We hope that you will have the patience and the tenacity to study and practice. And you will attain the great realization. Let's study the tarot's first arcanum of the tarot we will enter into the Sanctum Regnum of the High Magic. Arcanum number one. It is represented by the Magician. Over the head of the Magician appears the Holy Eight, the sacred symbol of the Infinite. If it is traced or drawn with the middle finger, index finger and the thumb over the cardiac plexus, this sign encompasses, defines and joins the magnetic currents of the superior. Mind, consciousness in the dream, with the currents of the inferior mind, vigil consciousness. This sign joins or separates all of the elements ruled by the atomic energy. Practice, in accordance with the aforesaid description, the following exercise is suggested. Withdraw from your mind all types of thoughts. Imagine now the holy eight as it is represented in the following graphic. Allow the figure to submerge itself within your consciousness and go to sleep. Imagine your mind as a blank screen without thinking of anything. 
Thus, after a while, you will awaken your consciousness in the astral body. Now, if the formation of this sign is considered, then we can see the continuity of the same arm which closes a double circuit in the first stroke, while in the second only encloses one, deviating in the other one to project itself towards the exterior after cutting the sign in the central crossing. One closes and the other opens. This is thus the required key to open all the doors, in order to cut all the currents formed by the atomic energy, from where we have imagined and deposited in the depth of the consciousness, until the one that originates all, which circulates in the same manner into the center of the ninth sphere. Now then, in order to save the appeals related to the inherent risks of every astral experience and to obtain a fast and, at the same time, perfect projection it is sufficient reason, for the sacred order of Tibet to affirm its motto, nothing can resist our power. To do this practice, moments before going to bed, the disciple must invoke with all of one's heart and with all one's soul, the great ruler of the sacred order of Tibet. The name of the great Guruji is Bhagavanakliva. This sacred order, which we have the high honor of representing here in Mexico, is the most powerful of the whole Oriental tradition. It is formed by 201 members. The board of directors is formed by 72 Brahmins. Papus in his elemental treatise of occult science stated that the true initiates from the Orient are the adscripts to the secret sanctuaries of Brahmanism, since they are the only ones who can give us the royal clue of the Arcanum AZF, thanks to their knowledge of the primeval Atlantean language, Wada, the fundamental root of Sanskrit, Hebrew, and Chinese. The sacred order of Tibet is the genuine depository of the real treasure of Aryavarta. This treasury is the great Arcanum. Bhagavana Kliva will help you to consciously travel in your astral body. Invoke him when you are meditating on the sacred sign of the infinite. On any given night, you will be invoked from the temple of the Himalayas. There you will be submitted to seven ordeals. There you will be taught the secret science. Now then, after this digression, let us continue with our initial point. The Holy Eight symbolizes the caduceus of Mercury and represents the two ganglionic cords that esoterically are entwined around the spinal. Medulla, these are Ida and Pingla, the two witnesses, the two olives. The two candlesticks standing before the throne of God on earth. The solar atoms rise through the cord of the right and the lunar atoms rise through the cord of the left. These solar and lunar atoms rise from our seminal system, the fire of Phlegathon and the water of Acheron, Acheron, cross themselves in the ninth sphere, forming the sign of the infinite. F plus A equals C, fire plus water, aqua, equals consciousness. Whosoever meditates on the sign of the infinite, will utilize the fire and the water in order to awaken consciousness. Now we understand why the two witnesses of revelation have the power of prophecy. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore, twelve sixty, days, clothed in sackcloth. As we said, these are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Revelation 11 verses 3, 4. Now then, the numbers 1260 are Kabbalistically added as follows. 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 0 is equal to 9, this is the symbol of the ninth sphere. The ninth sphere is sex. The two witnesses have their root in sex. These two witnesses Ida and Pingla are two fine ganglionic cords through which the solar and lunar atoms of our seminal system ascend to the chalice. The chalice is the brain. Fill your chalice, brethren, with the sacred wine of light. This explains why the sign of the infinite appears above the head of the magician, and before him are the swords, the cups and pentacles, are before him, and why is he grasping the little magic wand that symbolizes the spinal medulla. When the solar and lunar atoms make contact in the coccygeal bone, the kundalini, the igneous serpent of our magical powers, awakens, then we are devoured by the serpent, and we become lofty divine magicians. Arcanum 2 now let us study the magical equilibrium of the second arcanum of tarot. The physical body is organized with the elements. The intimate emanated from the inner star that has always smiled upon us, and he is positively polarized. 
and the physical body is the negative shadow of the intimate. Spirit and matter live in eternal battle. When the spirit defeats the matter, the spirit then becomes a master. Maya, illusion, could not exist without. The duality. Force and matter are two modalities of the same thing, energy. Matter is determinating energy and a determinator of new undulations. Evolution is a process of complication of the energy whose outcome is. The macrocosmos and the microcosmos. The universe is Maya, illusion. The universe exists because of karma, and it is a mass of floating. Shadows. When the spirit, the intimate, liberates himself from Maya, he returns to the Ahin Sof of the Kabbalah. In final synthesis, each being is just a super divine atom from the abstract absolute space. That atom is the Ahin Sophomore. The ineffable gods from the Ahin Sof are beyond our comprehension. The human mind is for the gods of the Ahin Sof as the activities of the mineral kingdom are for us. Within the Ahin Sof only the unity of life reigns, this is supreme happiness. The universe is duality. Maya pain. We need to liberate ourselves from the duality and to return into the unity of life. It is urgent to go beyond the painful manifestations of Maya. There exists a science with which we can tear the veil of Maya and return to the Ahin sophomore. That science is alchemy. Dr. Arnold Krumheller stated, a chemist forgot, by chance, about an emerald ring that was next to a little test tube containing radium and after a few weeks he discovered that the emerald had absolutely changed into another unknown stone for him. Thereafter he purposely left other stones like rubies, sapphires, etc. in contact with the radium. His surprise was so great when he discovered that after a little time such stones had changed their color absolutely, the blue ones had turned into red and the red ones into green. Dr. Krumheller continued saying, Gentlemen, do you know what the former statement that I just mentioned means, since I do not consider that it is scientifically established? It means that Shakespeare was right when he said that many things exist between heaven and earth that our scholastic consciousness does not even suspect, and the science of alchemy is reborn. When corroborating the transmutations of metals, the man and the woman must equilibrate their forces, they must become alchemists, so that they can return to the Ahin sophomore Circe offers the tempting cup and Ulysses rejects her with his sword. In the sacred sign of the infinite are represented the planetary genie's brain, heart, and sex. This struggle is terrible. Brain against sex, and sex against brain, and what is even more terrible is heart against heart. You know this. On the altars of the temples of the Great White Lodge the masters used to place three glasses of Loria, three glasses of alchemy. Each one of these three sacred glasses of the temple contains a precious bomb. The red bomb is the fire, the blue bomb is the water and the white. Bomb is the universal spirit of life. Ida and Pingla are the channels through which the atoms of fire and water ascend, the spirit grasps the cane of seven knots, that cane is the spinal medulla. When a man and a woman learn how to avoid the sexual spasm and the ejaculation of the N. Seminus, then the igneous serpent of our magical powers awakens. If you want to return to the Father who dwells in secret, you must first return to the bosom of your Divine Mother Kundalini. You need to raise the serpent of life through your middler channel. This is alchemy. Alchemy, you have forgotten your Divine Mother Kundalini. You need to worship the Divine and Blessed Mother Goddess of the world. You have been ungrateful to your Cosmic Mother, she is the Virgin of all religious cults, she is Isis, Mary, Sibylis, Adonia, Insuberta, etc. The Stone of Grace is surrounded by nine delectable mountains. That stone is sex. If you all want to return to the bosom of your Divine Mother, you need to work with the philosophical stone, sex. The Mayans stated that in the first heaven God, the Word, had held his stone, had held his serpent, and had held his substance. Only with the Arcanum AZF. Can the Word become flesh in order to grasp again his stone, his serpent, and his substance? Then we will return into the Ahin Sof, we will return into the unity of life. You are the children of the widow, your divine mother is now a widow, 
but when she rises through the middle channel, she marries the Eternal Beloved. Your Divine Mother is the second Arcanum, the Popus of the Tarot. She is crowned with a tiara. The head of the Divine Mother is surrounded by a veil. You must be courageous and lift the veil of Isis. Our Gnostic motto is Thelema, willpower. The mother carries her son, the word, in her arms, and she is seated between the two columns that symbolize the man and the woman. Worship the Virgin of the Sea. Brethren of mine. The Divine Mother appears in the second arcanum holding the priestly esoteric sign with her hand. Study within the sacred book of your Divine Mother. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7 verse 7, your Divine Mother can grant the occult powers you long for. Pray to your Divine Mother, practice your esoteric exercises, you can ask your adorable mother for clairvoyance, telepathy, clairaudience, the faculties for astral projection, etc. You can be sure that your Divine Mother will listen to your pleadings. You must meditate profoundly. Every day upon your Divine Mother, praying, supplicating. You need to be devoured by the serpent. One is the man, two is the woman, the man is one column, and the woman is the other column of the temple. The two columns must not be too close nor too distant, there must be enough space so that the light can pass between them. It is necessary to transmute the lead of the personality into the pure gold of the spirit, this is alchemy. The moon must be transformed into the sun. The moon is the soul, the sun is the inner Christ. We need to be Christified. No human being can return to the Father without having been devoured by the serpent. No one can be devoured by the serpent without having worked in the flaming forge of Vulcan, sex. The key of Christification is the Arcanum AZF. The mantra for the Arcanum AZF is E, A, O, I, Ignis, Fire, A, Aqua, Water, O, Origo, Principle, Spirit. Mars descends into the flaming forge of Vulcan in order to retemper his sword and to conquer the heart of Venus. Hercules descends in order to clean the stables of Augeas with the sacred fire and Perseus descends in order to cut off Medusa's head. Remember beloved disciples that our Divine Mother is Newt, and her word is, 56, 56. This number is Kabbalistically added as follows, 5 plus 6 is equal to 11, then 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 1 is the Father, 2 is she Newt, the Divine Mother Kundalini. Practice. 1. Lay down on your bed, facing up and with your body relaxed. 2. Achieve the state of slumber by meditating upon the sacred serpent that dwells in the coccygeal chakra. 3. Thereafter, pray with all of your heart, meditating on the following sacred ritualistic prayer. Invocation. Be thou, O Hadith, my secret, the Gnostic mystery of my being, the central point of my connection, my heart itself, and bloom on my fertile lips, made verb. Up above, in the infinite heavens, in the profound height of the unknown, the incessant glow of light is the naked beauty of Newt. She reclines, she bends in delectable ecstasy, to receive the kiss of secret fervor of Hadith. The winged sphere and the blue of the sky are yours. Oh, ha, oh, kukofna. Konsa. Oh, ha, oh, kukofna. Konsa. Oh, ha, oh, kukofna. Konsa. These mantras have the power of transmuting our sexual energy into light and fire within the alchemical laboratory of the human body. This prayer with its mantras can be utilized in sexual magic. This prayer with its mantras is an omnipotent clue in order to meditate upon our Divine Mother. Master Huericoca, Dr. Krumheller, stated the following in his Rosicrucian novel, when a man joins with a woman in the secret act. He becomes a god since he converts himself into a creator at that very moment. Some seers state that in those precise moments of love, the two beings are seen enveloped by a brilliant burst of light, they are enveloped by the most subtle and potent forces that are in nature. If a man and a woman would know how to withdraw without the spasm and retain such a vibration, then they can operate with it as magicians in order to purify themselves and obtain everything. 
However, if they do not know how to retain such light, it will abandon them in order to confine itself in the universal currents yet leaving behind it the open doors from where evil can enter into them. Then love is converted into hatred, illusion is followed by deception. With the mantric prayer that we have taught in this lesson, we retain that brilliant cosmic light that envelopes the human couple in that supreme moment of love with the condition of avoiding, by all means, the ejaculation of the end seminis. The mantras of this invocation have the power of transmuting the creative energies into light and fire. The bachelors and bachelorettes can also transmute and sublimate their sexual energies and carry them to the heart with this prayer and these mantras. You must know that in the temple of the heart, the creative energies are mixed with the forces of Christ and thereafter they elevate to the superior worlds. The inner Christ lives in the heart temple. The cross of initiation is received in the heart temple. This mantric prayer is also a formula of priestly power that the magician utilizes in his practices of internal meditation in order to arrive at the feet of his divine mother. If the meditation is perfect, your adorable mother will hear your call and she will come to you, then you can converse with her about ineffable, paradisiacal things. She is Devi Kundalini. She is the popus of the tarot. The Divine Mother always listens to her devotees. In the sacred land of the Vedas, the illuminated Ramankrishna was one of her greatest devotees. Do you want to reach the heights of Nirvikalpa? Samadhi? Do you need to develop Anubhaya, perception of your inner God in meditation? Do you want the Jin science? Remember that you have an adorable mother. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7 verse 7. Arcanum 3. Remember that the Sepher Yetzirah marvelously describes all the splendors of the world and the extraordinary play of the Sephiroth in God and in man. Through the 32 paths of wisdom. The entire science of the Sephiroth is hidden within the sexual mysteries. The soul has three aspects. 1. Nefesh, the animal soul. 2. Ruach, the thinking soul. 3. Mishama, the spiritual soul. The Sephiroth are the substratum of these three aspects of the souls. The Sephiroth are atomic. The Zohar insists on these three principal elements which compose the world. These elements are fire, shin, water, mem, air, aleph. These elements are the perfect synthesis of the four manifested elements. The powerful mantra E, A, O, encompasses the magical power of the triangle of these principal elements. E, Ignis, fire. A, aqua, water. O, origo, spiritual principle. E, A, O, is the supreme mantra of the Arcanum AZF. Whosoever wants to raise the soul of the world through the medullar channel must work with. The sulfur, fire, with the mercury, water, and with the salt, philosophical earth. It is only in this way that one can be born in spirit and in truth. The Twelve Secret Keys of Basil Valentine, Basilius Valentinus. The Benedictine of Erfurt are found within the Arcanum AZF. The entire secret of the great work is enclosed within the Azoth series of Basil Valentine. Azoth is the sexual creative principle of nature. The magnum work has been realized when the rose of the spirit blooms upon the cross of our body. The three principal elements are the three mother letters of the Hebraic alphabet. When one is practicing the Arcanum AZF, one is working with these three principal elements within the great laboratory of nature. One works with mercury, sulfur, and salt when one practices the Arcanum AZF. This is how the lead of the personality is transmuted into the gold of the spirit. This is how we elaborate the golden child of alchemy within ourselves. These three principal elements become manifested within the four elements of nature. There exists the heat of fire and air, the humidity of air and water, and the dryness of fire and earth. These are the three principal elements, the E, A, O, the sulfur, mercury and salt contained within the four elements of nature. The elemental paradises of nature are found within these principal elements. The Kabbalist alchemist must learn how to use sulfur. 
Mercury and Salt The larvas of the astral body, incubus, succubus, basilisks, dragons, phantoms, etc., are destroyed by putting sulfur powder inside of our shoes. Sulfur originates in visible vapors that rise in order to disintegrate these types of larvas. Malignant forms of thoughts and larvas Enclosed within any room are disintegrated when one burns sulfur upon a flaming piece of charcoal. The quicksilver, mercury, is useful to prepare lustral water. The great astrologer Nostradamus spent many nights before a copper container filled with water. This great seer, by looking into these waters, saw the future events that he left written in his famous prophecies. If we add mercury to water and place a mirror at the bottom of the copper container, a marvelous clear teleidoscope is formed. We advise the use of any copper container with the exception of the cauldron which is a symbol of black magic. Copper is intimately related with the pituitary gland and has the power of awakening clairvoyance. Salt is also used often in white magic. Salt must be combined with alcohol. If alcohol and salt are placed within a container and if this mixture is put upon the fire, a marvelous smoke offering is obtained. This can only be done when invoking the gods of medicine, when a sick person needs to be healed. Thus, they will come to your call. The sulfur, fire, totally burns without leaving any residuals. Sulfur is the shin of the Zohar. The water, the Enseminus, is the MEM of the Zohar. By means of successive transmutations, fire and water are reduced to the Kabbalistic Aleph. This is what the alchemist calls Alchist. This is how the E.A. O is performed, and this is the way to open the twelve faculties of the soul. The soul is Christified, the Kundalini blooms upon our fertile lips made verb. The ternary is the word, plenitude, fecundity, nature. The generation of the three worlds. The third arcanum of Kabbalah is that woman dressed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and crowned with twelve stars. The symbol of the Queen of Heaven is the Empress of the Tarot. She is a mysterious, crowned woman, seated with the scepter of command in her hand. The globe of the world is on top of the scepter. She is Urania Venus of the Greeks, the Christified Soul. The man is the Arcanum number one and the woman is the Arcanum number two of the Tarot. The Christified Soul is the outcome of the sexual union of both, the secret is the Arcanum AZF. The woman is the mother of the verb. Christ is always the child of immaculate conceptions. It is impossible to be born without a mother. When the initiate is ready to incarnate the verb, a woman appears in the superior worlds as if pregnant, suffering labor pains in delivery. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to, John, the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. John 19 verses 26, 27 The word John can be rearranged as follows. E, E, O, U, A, N, the verb, the dragon of wisdom. Indeed, the woman is the mother of the verb and the woman officiates upon the altar of the blessed goddess mother of the world. Now, brethren, know that the venerable priestess of your divine mother Kundalini is your spouse. Brothers and sisters, pray and meditate a great deal to your divine mother Kundalini as follows. Invocation O Isis, mother of the cosmos, root of love, trunk, bud, leaf, flower, and seed of all that exists, we conjure thee, naturalizing force. We call upon the queen of space and of the night, and kissing her loving eyes, drinking the dew from her lips, breathing the sweet aroma of her body. We exclaim, O thou, Newt, eternal Sadie of heaven, who art the primordial soul, who art what was and what shall be, whose veil no mortal has lifted, when thou art beneath the irradiating stars of the nocturnal and profound sky of the desert, with purity of heart and in the flame of the serpent, we call upon thee. Pray and meditate intensely. The Divine Mother teaches her children. This prayer must be performed while combining meditation with the state of slumber. Then as in visions of dreams, illumination emerges. Thus, 
the Divine Mother approaches the devotee in order to instruct him in the great mysteries. Arcanum 4 Aum The Arcanum 4 of the Tarot is the holy and mysterious Tetragrammaton, the sacred name of the Eternal One that has four letters, Yod, F, V, A. Yod is the man, A is the woman, Vo is the phallus, A is the uterus. Yet, we can also state, Yod is the man, A is the woman, Vo is the fire, A is the water. The profound study of the four letters of the Eternal One takes us inevitably to the ninth sphere, sex. We must lift our serpent through the medullar channel and carry it up to her heart's temple. The cross of the initiation is received in the heart temple. The magnetic center of the father is found between the eyebrows. The sanctuary of the mother is found within the heart temple. The four points of the cross symbolize the fire, the air, the water and the earth, also spirit, matter, movement and repose. Remember beloved disciple that the four elements of alchemy are salt, mercury, sulfur and azoth, the salt is the matter. The mercury is the N. seminis, the azoth is the mysterious ray of kundalini. The mercury of secret philosophy must be fecundated by sulfur, the fire, so that the salt can become regenerated. Only like this can we write the book of Azoth, write it upon a rod if what you want is initiation. The clue of our liberation is found in the lingam yoni. The cross has four points. The cross of initiation is phallic. The insertion of the vertical phallus into the formal terrace forms a cross. This is the cross of the initiation that we must place upon our shoulders. The four sacred animals of alchemy are The lion that hides the enigma of fire, the man that represent the mercury of secret philosophy, the eagle that corresponds to the air, the bull that symbolizes the earth. Egypt's sphinx, as well as Ezekiel's sphinx, has the sacred symbolism of the four creatures of alchemy. The water contained in the lakes, rivers and oceans when heated by the fire of the sun are transformed into clouds that ascend up to the sky, and after a period of digestion are converted into lightning and thunder. This same process is repeated in the sexual laboratory of the alchemist. Our motto is Thelema. That is willpower. The entrance into the old, archaic temples was commonly a hidden hole in some mysterious spot in the dense jungle. We departed from Eden through the door of sex, and only through that door can we return to Eden. Eden is sex. It is the narrow, straight and difficult door that leads us into the light. In the solitude of these mysterious sanctuaries, the neophytes were submitted to the four initiatic ordeals. The ordeals of fire, air, water and earth always defined the diverse purifications of the neophytes. Commonly, these sanctuaries of mysteries were found located at the foot of some volcano. There the disciples would fall to the ground and lose consciousness. In those moments the Hierophant would take the students out of their physical bodies, thus, they would already be in the astral plane, and into the profundities of the sanctuary. Then he would teach them the grandiose mysteries of life and death. The volcanic emanations of the earth produced that apparent state of death. Some disciples fall in that apparent state of death within the Gnostic. Lumisials The ceremony of carrying the cross, as was practiced in the Gnostic Lumisials, serves in order to humbly confirm some internal. Esoteric Initiation Each one of the seven bodies of the human being must be crucified and stigmatized. All students of Kabbalah must be familiar with all of the elementals of fire, air, water, and earth. The present human being is still not a king or queen of nature, but all are called to be kings or queens and priests and priestesses according to the order of Melchizedek. It is necessary for the student to become familiar with all the elemental creatures of the four elements. Salamanders live in fire, undines and nereids live in water, sylphs live in the air and gnomes live in the earth. The Gospel of Mark is symbolized by a lion, fire, the Gospel of Matthew is represented by a youth, water, the Gospel of John is represented by the eagle, air, and the Gospel of Luke is represented by the bull, earth. The Four Gospels symbolize the four elements of nature and the realization of the great work, the Magnus Opus. Every hierophant of nature is converted into a king of the elementals. 
If you want to be admitted into the elemental paradises of nature, then respect all life, do not kill any animal species. Do not drink wine that contains alcohol, love vegetables, do not ever destroy a plant or a flower. You only need two things in life, wisdom and love. This is how you will attain happiness, peace and abundance. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5 verse 48 Every initiate must work with the elementals in the central mountain range. That mountain range is the spinal medulla. The prima matter of the great work of the Father is the end seminis. You know this. The sacred receptacle is in your creative organs, the furnace is the muladhara chakra, the chimney is the medullar channel and the distiller is the brain. When we work in the laboratory of the third logos, we must transmute the lead of our personality into the gold of the spirit. The Magnus work cannot be performed without the cooperation of the elementals. The gnomes and pygmies are the great alchemists that transmute the lead into gold, they reduce the metals into its semen, seed, in order to transmute them into the pure gold of the spirit. Their labor would be impossible if the undines did not obey or if the salamanders of fire would not make the voluptuous undines fertile, because without the fire, the tempting undines can only take us to a shipwreck. Ulysses, the cunning warrior and destroyer of citadels, was himself bound to the mast of the ship so that he would not fall into the seductive sexual beauty of the undines. Ancient Gnostics stated, all of you will become gods if you leave Egypt and pass through the Red Sea. The ocean of temptations. The vapors of the prima matter of the great work would not ascend through the chimney without the help of the disquieting sylphs. The gnomes need to distill the gold in the brain, and this is only possible with the help of the aerial sylphs. The gnomes transmute the lead into gold. The magnus opus would be impossible without the elementals. We need to become familiar with the elementals of nature. Practice Agni God of Fire Fire, light a fire then vocalize the mantra in re. This mantra is vocalized in two separate syllables, in re. Prolong the sound of each letter. Thereafter, concentrate on the fire that you have lit, on the candle, on the oil lamp or on the charcoal, and profoundly meditate on the fire. Invoke me, Samuel, your friend, who wrote this lecture, I will assist you in this practice. Then vocalize the S as an affable and fine whistle like the buzzing of a rattlesnake. Practice with the sylphs. Air, seated on a comfortable chair or laying down, face up, with the body relaxed, you will profoundly meditate on the exorcism of the air. Practice with the undines. Water, before a cup of water, get into the state of slumber while meditating on the exorcism of water. Thereafter, while still in a state of slumber, vocalize the letter M as follows. M, with your lips hermetically sealed. This sound is like the bellow of the bull, yet it is a prolonged sustained sound that does not decrease like the bull does. The letter M is the mantra of the waters. This is how you will be in contact with the creatures of the waters. Thereafter, invoke the genie of the waters. The genie's name is Nixa. Practice with the gnomes. Profoundly meditate on the heart temple of the center of earth. Meditate on the genie of earth whose name is Chamgam. Beseech him to put you in contact with the gnomes that inhabit the entrails of earth. Call the genie of the gnomes. The genie's name is G.O.B. Get into a state of slumber while concentrating on that genie. Then vocalize the mantra e -a. O. When profound meditation is intelligently combined with the state of slumber, it allows you to enter into the elemental paradises of nature. Every alchemist needs to work with the elementals of nature. The hieroglyphic of the fourth arcanum of the tarot is the emperor. The sovereign appears forming a marvelous triangle with his body. When the legs of the emperor are crossed, they form a cross. This is the image of the Athenor Avenor of alchemists. The joint of the cross with a triangle is only possible by means of the potable gold, sacred fire, of alchemy. The innermost puts the cross of initiation with the arcanum four of the tarot over his shoulders. We will end this lecture by stating that the elementals of fire are commanded with the trident of iron or with the wand of iron.
the elementals of the air are commanded with an eagle feather or any other bird. The elementals of water are commanded with a cup filled with water and the elementals of the earth with a sword or with a brand new knife. The special kingdom of the gnomes resides in the region of the north, the one of the salamanders in the south, the one of the sylphs in the east and the one of the undines in the west. These four elemental hierarchies form a cross. Behold the holy and mysterious Tetragrammaton. Arcanum 5. Beloved brethren of my soul, today we are going to study the fifth arcanum of the tarot. This arcanum is the flaming pentagram, the blazing star, the sign of divine omnipotence. This is the ineffable symbol of the verb made flesh, the terrifying star of the Magi. When the pentagram elevates its two inferior rays towards the sky it represents Satan. When the pentagram becomes light, it elevates only one of its rays towards the sky. This represents the internal Christ of every human being who comes into this world. The human being with his legs and arms spread out to the right and left is the star of five. Points. Brain and sex live in an eternal struggle. Brain must control sex. When sex overcomes the brain, then the star of five points, the human being, falls into the abyss with the feet pointing upwards and the head pointing. Downwards, this is the inverted star, the male goat of Mendez. A human figure with the head aiming downwards and the feet aiming upwards naturally represents a demon. The entire science of Gnosis is found summarized within the flaming star. Many bodhisattvas, human souls of masters, have fallen inverted, like the five-pointed star, with the superior ray aiming downwards and the two inferior rays aiming upwards. When any of these bodhisattvas rise again, when this soul returns to the path, when this soul recapitulates initiations, then the brethren become astonished and say, this fellow is only a beginner in these studies and now he boasts of being an initiate. Truly, many times students judge a priori because they ignore the great mysteries. Therefore, we must know how to differentiate between a soul that is just starting these studies and a fallen bodhisattva. In St. John's Revelation 8 verse 10, the pentagram, the five-pointed star, falls from heaven, burning as if it were a lamp, and the human waters became bitter, they became wormwood. In Isaiah 14 verse 12, the prophet said, How art thou fallen from heaven, though Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Nevertheless, the Luciferic star, the fallen soul, will shine one day as the morning star in the right hand of the verb. Many times, a man or a woman in search of the divine torch of truth arrives at any Gnostic Lemigial, Apparently the newly arrived is now a beginner, however, the brethren ignore what the soul of that person is, he or she can be a bodhisattva, the human soul of a master, that wants to return to his own father who dwells in secret. Thus, the brethren become overwhelmed when something superior occurs to the apparent beginner, then they say, we, who are older in these studies, are not passing through what this beginner is now passing through, thus, they ask themselves, how is it possible that this person who has only just begun is boasting about being an initiate? Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Matthew 7 verses 1, 2 We need to be humble in order to acquire wisdom, and after acquiring it we need to be even more humble. The Bodhisattvas fall because of sex and they also rise up because of sex. Sex is the philosophical stone. The decapitation of Medusa, the Satan that we carry within, would be impossible without the precious treasury of the philosophical stone. Remember that Medusa is the maiden of evil, the psychological eye, whose head is covered with hissing vipers. In occult science, it is stated that the union of the Sophic Mercury with the Sophic Sulphur results in the Holy Philosophical Stone. The N. Seminus is the Mercury, Sulphur is the sacred fire of love. We live now in the specific age of Samuel, we are living in the fifth era. Life has initiated its return towards the great light and in these moments, we have to define ourselves by becoming eagles or reptiles, angels or demons. We are before the philosophical dilemma of to be or not to be. The Arcanum 5 of the 
Tarot is represented by the Hierophant. The fifth sphere is definitive because here the human being holds in his hands the reins of his own destiny and becomes an angel or a demon. The great Hierophant of the Tarot also appears seated between the two columns of the temple making the sign. The Pentagram of Esotericism The number five is grandiose, it is sublime. Remember that the human being is also a star of five points, this human star must cleanse itself constantly with the five perfumes. If we can make a metallic pentagram and consecrate it, we can also consecrate ourselves with the same rites and perfumes that we use to consecrate our metallic pentagram. This is because the human being is a star of five points. Those who feel that they are polluted with larvae, or in misery, must smudge themselves with the five perfumes in order to become clean. This must be performed in conjunction with treading on the path of perfect chastity. In the Lumigials, this custom of cleansing the brothers and sisters that are full of larvae should be established. Thus, they will receive the benefit in their souls and in their bodies. Arcanum 6 Beloved brethren of my soul, we are now going to study the sixth arcanum of the tarot. Beloved, remember that indeed and without any doubt, the two interlaced triangles of the Seal of Solomon, which join or separate love, are the two shuttles with which the ineffable mystery of eternal life in the loom of God is woven or unwoven. The upper triangle symbolizes Kether, the father who is in secret, Chakma, the son, and Bina, the Holy Spirit of each human being. The lower triangle represents the three traitors of Hiram Abith, those three traitors are inside of us. The first traitor is the demon of desire, that traitor lives within the astral body. The second traitor is the demon of the mind, that traitor lives within the mental body. The third traitor is the demon of evil will, that traitor lives within the body of willpower, causal body. The Bible cites these three traitors in the Apocalypse of St. John. In Revelations 16 verses 13-14, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false. Prophet, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The three traitors constitute the reincarnating ego, the psychological eye, the Satan that must be dissolved in order to incarnate the inner Christ, which is constituted by Kether, Chakma, and Bina. The superior triangle is the resplendent dragon of wisdom, whereas the inferior triangle is the black dragon. The sign of the infinite or the Tau cross is found in the center of the two triangles, both are phallic, sexual, signs. The soul is found between the two triangles and has to decide between the white dragon and the black dragon. Such a dilemma is absolutely sexual. The clue is found in the serpent. The rooster's legs of Abraxas are made by the double tail of a serpent. The tempting serpent of Eden exists as well as Moses' serpent of brass, natchash, interlaced around the tau, in other words, entwined around the sexual lingam, the phallus, the yoni is the uterus. Normally, the serpent is enclosed within the Chakra Mulathara, Church of Ephesus. The serpent slumbers in that coccygeal center entwined three and a half times. The serpent must inevitably leave from its church. If the serpent rises through the middle or channel, we convert ourselves into angels, and if the serpent descends, we convert ourselves into demons. Now you can comprehend why there are always two serpents around the caduceus of Mercury. The sexual force is the hilum of the Gnostics. When the students spill the cup of Hermes during their practices with the Arcanum AZF, they commit the crime of the Nicolaitans, which used a system in order to make the serpent descend. This is how the human being is converted into a demon. The complete and positive development of the serpent is only achieved by working with the philosophical stone within the sexual laboratory of the practical alchemist. The superior triangle is the center of the alchemist's microcosmos and the alchemist's macrocosmos. The sign of the mercury of the secret philosophy, the N. Seminus, cannot be missed in the center of the triangle. Man and 
Woman must work with the sun and with the moon, with the gold and with the silver, sexual symbols, in order to perform the great work. Nevertheless, this work is very difficult because the male goat of Mendez, the black dragon, always tries to make the alchemist fall sexually. It is urgent to work with the four elements of alchemy in order to realize the great work. The alchemical macrocosmos is illuminated by the light, this is the superior triangle of the Seal of Solomon. The alchemical microcosmos is in the shadows, in the region where the souls fight against the black dragon. It is precisely in the microcosmos, represented by the inferior triangle, where the entire work of alchemical laboratory must be performed by us. The marvelous microcosmos and macrocosmos alchemical illustration above, from Chimica Basilica Philosophica, represents the man and the woman working with the sun, the symbol of the phallus, and with the moon. The symbol of the uterus. In that medieval painting, two men together or two women together do not appear, because that crime against nature originates the filthy vampire. The tenebrous ones justify their crimes against nature, thus, the law punishes them by separating them from their superior triangle forever. This is how they roll into the abyss. The mysteries of Lingam Yoni are terribly divine and cannot be altered. The Lingam can only be united with the Yoni, this is the law of the holy alchemy. The alchemical weddings signify, as a matter of fact, the perfect matrimony. The alchemist must not only kill desire, but moreover, he has to kill the very shadow of the horrible tree of desire. Sacred dances between men and women were performed in the mysteries of Eleusis along with love and the music of the centers in order to enchant the serpent. Then, the dancers of the temple were clean from the filthy venom of desire. All kinds of sins are forgiven, except the sins against the Holy Spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 However, fornication does not pertain only to the physical body, it is also related to thoughts, emotions, words and animal sensations. In the mysteries of Eleusis, the couples danced in order to mutually magnetize themselves, then while dancing, the couple, man and woman, together attained ecstasy. The bioelectromagnetic interchange between man and woman cannot be replaced by anything. This is a gigantic, grandiose, and terribly divine power. God shines upon the perfect couple. If you want in-depth self-realization, remember this alchemical aphorism, nature must be imitated in everything. Nature enjoys nature. Nature dominates nature. The task of the alchemist is to search for the occult and ancient knowledge and to perform the great work in his sexual laboratory. The great work is difficult. It signifies many years of experiments, terrible sacrifices and tremendous difficulties. There exists a transmutator agent, the philosophical stone, a heavenly influence, cosmic religiosity, diverse astral influences, esoteric astrology, influence of letters, numbers, correspondences, and sympathies, Kabbalah. The sacred principles of alchemy are 1. Unity 2. A pair of opposites, man-slash-woman, active-slash-passive. 3. Trinity, active, passive, neutral. 4. The elements, fire, air, water and earth. The entire work of the great work, the Magnus Opus, is synthesized in the Seal of Solomon. The six points of the star are masculine, the six outer obtuse angles that exist between point and point are feminine. In synthesis, this star has 12 rays, 6 masculine and 6 feminine. The Star of Solomon is the perfect symbol of the central sun, all of the zodiacal measurements are found summarized within the Seal of Solomon. The entire sexual genesis of the zodiac is hidden in the Seal of Solomon. The inner relation that exists between the zodiac and the invincible central sun is found in the Seal of Solomon. The twelve rays of the brilliant star crystallize by means of alchemy in the twelve zodiacal constellations. When the student enters into the temple of the Sphinx he studies the great book of nature, where all of the cosmic laws are written. Indeed, very few are the ones who can open the book and study it. 
The ordeal of the sanctuary is very terrible. Very few are the human beings who have succeeded in passing such an ordeal. A precious jewel, with the seal of Solomon, a ring filled with ineffable light is granted to the one who victoriously passes the ordeal of the sanctuary. The neophyte who touches the ring with the left hand inevitably loses it. Another explanation of the seal of Solomon is the following, above the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, below the power that governs, the intimate. The power that deliberates, the mind, and the power that executes. The personality. When the power of deliberation and the power of execution become rebellious, they are insubordinate against the governor, the intimate, and then the outcome is failure. The three traitors usually take possession of the powers of deliberation and execution. The bodhisattvas usually receive messages from the superior worlds, nevertheless, ignoramuses confuse the bodhisattvas with the mediums of spiritism channelers. There exist the medium and the mediator, bodhisattva. The medium is negative whereas the mediator is positive. The medium is a vehicle of the tempting serpent of Eden. The bodhisattva, the mediator, is a vehicle of the serpent of brass nachash that healed the Israelites in the wilderness. Great masters used to dictate messages through the lips of their bodhisattvas. People do not understand this and mistake the mediators with the detrimental mediums of spiritism because people allow themselves to be carried away by false appearances. Within the seal of Solomon are found represented all the positive and negative forces of universal magnetism. In the works of high magic, it is necessary to trace a circle around us. Such a circle must be totally closed, interrupted by the seal of Solomon. With the seven metals, Gnostic brethren can manufacture medallions and rings with the seal of Solomon. The seal of Solomon must be utilized in all of the works of invocations, and in the practices with elementals, as we have already taught in Arcanum for of this series of lectures on Kabbalah. The elementals of nature tremble before the seal of the living God. The angel of the sixth seal of the apocalypse has reincarnated at this time within a feminine body, this angel is a specialist in the sacred jinn science. Arcanum 6 is the lover of the tarot. It is the soul between vice and virtue. The Arcanum 6 is enchainment, equilibrium, loving union between man and woman. It struggles terribly. Between love and desire, the mysteries of lingam yoni connection. The struggle between the two ternaries is found in the sixth Arcanum of the tarot. The Arcanum 6 is the supreme affirmation of the inner Christ and the supreme negation of Satan. Watch and pray. Arcanum 7. Remember that the number 7 represents magical power in all of its strength. The Holy 7 is the sanctum regnum of sexual magic. Number 7 is the intimate served by all of the elemental forces of nature. Everyone who works with the Arcanum AZF receives the flaming sword of the seventh arcanum. In the name of truth, we affirm that the flaming sword of the great hierophants is absolutely transmuted semen. It is the outcome of sexual magic. This is how we transform ourselves into terribly divine gods. The sexual organs are the legitimate laboratorium oratorium of the amphitheatrum sapienti eterni. These are the sanctum regnum where the hierophant receives the sword of justice. Vitriol. In the alchemical garden of pleasures, we find the word vitriol. This word, vitriol, is an acronym, derived from the phrase visitum interior terrace rectificator in venias occultum lapidum, visit the interior of our earth, and by rectification you will find the occult stone. We must search within the interior of our philosophical earth, the human organism, then by rectifying and working with the arcanum AZF, the methuna, we will find the philosophical stone. The sun, phallus, masculine principle, is the father of the stone. The moon, uterus, is the feminine principle, the mother of the philosophical stone. The wind bears the sun in its womb and the earth nourishes it. The sun and the moon, masculine and feminine principles, are combined inside of the chalice, symbol of the mind. The sun is the father of the stone, fire, the moon is the mother, water, and the wind, seminal vapors, bear the 
sun in its alchemical womb and the philosophical earth nourishes it. The chalice is resting on the caduceus of Mercury, the central system, spinal column, with the two sympathetic chords known in the East as Ida and Pingla. Two influences interact in the generation of the philosophical stone. One of a masculine character and the other of a feminine character. The entire work is performed with the great arcanum. The star of seven points is an inseparable part of the acronym vitriol. The seven serpents of alchemy are related with the seven planets and the seven greats cosmic. Realizations The acronym vitriol, with its seven letters and its seven words, completely symbolizes the great work. The mysteries of the arcane. Seven are terribly divine. The acronym vitriol with its seven letters and its seven words symbolizes the entire septenary great work that shines like the sun. In the temple of science. The sun and the moon, the fire and the water. The king and the queen form an integral part of any apprentice of alchemy. The apprentice has to perform seven great works that culminate with the crowning of the great work. The face of a venerable elder appears in the center of the septenary star of alchemy according to the illustration of Viridarium Chimicum. Such a venerable face in the septenary star of alchemy symbolizes the Sophic Mercury, the N. Seminus. Listen pigeons of alchemy. Listen to how Astolcio explains this emblem that which was enclosed within many forms, now you see it included in one thing. The beginning is our elder and he has the key, sulfur with salt and mercury give wealth. If you do not see anything here, there is no reason for you to keep searching, for you will be blind even in the midst of the light. Those students of occultism who think that they can acquire in-depth self-realization without the Arcanum AZF are absolutely mistaken. The great secret sister master stated that those who want to know the mysteries of Chiram, the fire, must search among the medieval alchemists. This great master was a true yogini disciple of Count Homi, nevertheless, after she had been widowed by the Count Blavatsky, she married the Colonel Alcott in order to work with the arcanum of sexual magic. Only thus could she achieve in-depth self-realization. The great yogi avatar Sri Lahiri Lahasaya was called to the initiation by the immortal Babaji when he already had a spouse. Thus, this is how the yogi avatar was self-realized. In Hindustan, sexual magic is known by the Sanskrit term Urdhvarita and the yogis who practice it are named Urdhvarita yogis. Authentic yogis practice sexual magic with their spouse. There are two types of brahmacharya, sexual abstinence, solar and lunar. The solar type is for those that have performed the second birth. The lunar type of brahmacharya is that absurd sexual abstinence that serves only to produce filthy, nocturnal sexual pollutions with all of its fatal consequences. Hatha yoga is just a matter of acrobatics that have the power of taking the student out of the superior worlds in order to enslave him in the physical world. We have never known of an acrobatic hatha yogi with internal illuminated powers. Three rays of illumination of intimate self-realization exist, the yogi, the mystic, and the perfect matrimony. However, the three rays inevitably have the need for sexual magic. Anything that is not directed through sexual magic is a useless waste of time. We come out from Eden through the doors of sex, and only through those doors can we return to Eden. Eden is sex in itself. The seventh arcanum is represented by a crowned warrior that carries a triangle above his crown and he is standing upon the cubic stone of Yesid, sex. The two sphinxes, one white and one black, are pulling his chariot, this symbolizes the masculine and feminine forces. His armor is the divine science that makes us powerful. The warrior must learn how to use the staff and the sword, thus, he will attain the great victory, Netzach. Our motto is Thelema, willpower. Let us remember that there are seven vices that we must transmute into wisdom and love. Pride is transmuted into the solar faith and into the humility of the Christ. Lunar avarice is transformed into hope, altruism, and generosity. The fatal Venusian lust is transmuted into the chastity of Venus and into charity of the spirit. Martian anger is transmuted into the marvelous force of love and meekness. 
Laziness is transmuted into prudent Mercurian diligence. Gluttony is transmuted into Saturnian temperance. Envy is transmuted into Jupiterian philanthropy and happiness for others. We can disintegrate our defects and dissolve the psychological eye only by means of the science of transmutations. Work with the Arcanum AZF in order to receive the sword. The rulers of the seven planets are Gabriel, Moon, Raphael, Mercury, Uriel, Venus, Michael, Sun, Samael, Mars, Zachariel, Jupiter, Orophiel, Saturn. The seven notes of the lyre of Orpheus correspond to the seven planets. A planetary note corresponds to each one of the seven colors of the solar prism. Alchemy is intimately related to music. Atlanta is the voice that flees, Hippomines is the voice that pursues, and the apple is the voice that delays. E. A. O. is the supreme mantrum of sexual magic. E. A. O. is the name of the serpent. Blessed be the E. A. O. E. A. O. must be chanted during the practices of the laboratory, sexual alchemy. Thus, this is how the serpent moves about and is joyful. Chant E. A. Dot o. Seven times while in the laboratorium oratorium. The mantra in Re has an absolute power over the fire. Chant this mantra also in the laboratorium oratorium in order to carry the fire to each one of your seven chakras. Chant in Re as follows, in Re, en Re, on Ro. On Ru, on Ra. These mantras must be chanted by syllabifying them as follows. In Re. Clairvoyance. En Re. Clairaudience. On Ro. Heart intuition. Unru. Telepathy solar plexus. Onra. Pulmonary chakras, memory of past lives. The great hierophant Jesus Christ chanted these mantras in the laboratorium oratorium of the pyramid of Kephron. The seven Kabbalistic signs of the planets are moon, a globe sliced by two half moons. Mercury, one caduceus and the sinocephalus. Venus, a sexual lingam. Sun, a serpent with the head of a lion. Mars, a dragon biting guards of a sword. Jupiter, the flaming pentagram or the eagle's beak. Saturn, a limping elder. Or a serpent entwined on a hellicious stone. The seven pentacles, talismans, have the power of attracting the seven planetary forces. Gold is the sun's metal, silver is the moon's metal. Iron is the metal of Mars, copper is the metal of Venus, quicksilver is Mercury's metal, tin is Jupiter's metal and lead is the metal of Saturn. Perfect pentacles, talismans, can be prepared with the proper stones and metals. The Lord's Prayer is the most perfect prayer because it has seven magical petitions. Practice Asana, the student must lie down on the floor on a mat, a meditation or yoga mat. The student can spread out his, her arms and legs to each side until the five-pointed star is formed. Relax all of your body, do not think about anything, set the screen of your mind to be blank, concentrate your mind on your inner God and start praying the Lord's Prayer extremely slowly, and reflect on the sense of each petition. Become drowsy, to reach a profoundly sleeping state while meditating upon each word, upon each phrase, worshipping, worshipping, worshipping. The student must not move upon waking up, be motionless and practice a retrospective exercise in order to remember the internal experiences, remember where you were, what places you visited while in the astral space, what was done, what was seen, etc. This practice must be performed as a daily habit without ever becoming weary. Seeing and hearing the great internal realities must be the goal. Arcanum 8 let us study, in this lecture, the eighth key of Basil Valentine. Illustration of Viridarium Chemicum The eighth key is a clear and perfect alchemical allegory of the processes of death and resurrection that inevitably occur in the esoteric preparation of the philosophical stone. The entire inner preparation of the stone and the metallic transmutation are represented in this allegory. The entire human material employed in this work dies, it becomes rotten,
corrupted and becomes blackened within the philosophical egg, then it becomes marvelously white. The entire summary of the great work is found within the philosophical egg. The masculine and feminine sexual principles are contained within the egg. Thus, like the fledgling that emerges from the egg, or like the universe of Brahma that emerges from the golden egg, the master emerges the same way from the philosophical egg. In the eighth key an illustration of the viridarium chimicum, death is represented by a corpse, putrefaction is represented by crows, the crop is represented by a humble farmer, the growth by a wheat stalk, and the resurrection by a deceased person who rises from the grave, sepulchre, and by an angel that plays the trumpet of the final judgment. We, the Gnostics, know that the corpse, the death in the eighth key of Basil Valentine represents the two witnesses of the Apocalypse, Revelations, 11 verses 3, 6, that are now dead. By means of alchemical putrefaction represented by the crows. By means of alchemy, the two witnesses resurrect. Our motto is Thelema. The entire power is found enveloped within the seed that is symbolized in the wheat stalk. The sacred angel that we carry within, plays his trumpet and the two witnesses rise from the grave. Two archers, one who hits the bullseye and the other who misses, symbolize the two alchemical interpretations that can occur, the right and the wrong. The white sexual magic and the black sexual magic. The golden alchemy and the erotic Satanism. The ejaculation of the end seminis does not exist in the golden alchemy, whereas in erotic Satanism there exists the ejaculation of the end seminis. In India, the black yogis, Azura Samphita, ejaculate the end seminis, Shushra, in order to criminally mix it with the feminine Raja within the vagina thereafter. By handling the Vajroli in a negative way, they reabsorb this fluid already mixed with feminine Raja. The black yogis and Dugpa believe that they are wisely achieving the union of the solar and lunar atoms in order to awaken the Kundalini. The outcome of such black tantrism is the negative awakening of the serpent. Therefore, instead of ascending, the serpent descends downwards into the atomic infernos of the human being and becomes the tail of Satan. This is how these black yogis end up separating themselves from their inner god forever, they are demons. So, that is the black magic. Through this way the two witnesses of the apocalypse never resurrect, because this way leads into the abyss and the second death. Therefore, whosoever ejaculates his seminal liquor withdraws himself from his inner god. The yogis who practice the Urdhavarita Yoga, positive sexual magic, do not ejaculate their end seminis. In this case, the combination of Shusa, solar atoms, and Raja, lunar atoms, is performed within the philosophical egg, in other words, within our own sexual laboratory of the alchemist. Thus, this is how the two witnesses resurrect. These are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before the god of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire comes out of their mouths, and devours their enemies. And if any man would want to hurt them, it is necessary that he must be thus killed. These have power to close heaven, to those who practice sexual magic with seminal ejaculation, that it does not rain in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over, the human, waters to convert them into blood, and to smite the philosophical, earth, the human organism of fornicators, with all kinds of plagues, as often as they will, according with the law. Revelation 11 verses 4, 6 Disposition of the Two Witnesses The two witnesses are a semi-etheric, semi-physical pair of sympathetic cords that are entwined along the spinal medulla, forming the caduceus of Mercury, the sacred eight, the sign of the infinite. In the male, the two witnesses depart from the right and left testicles and in the female, they depart from the ovaries. These two witnesses are located to the right and left sides of the dorsal spine. The two witnesses alternatively ascend from left to right until forming a marvelous knot in that space located between the two eyebrows, thereafter they continue through the nasal cavities. The two witnesses connect the sexual organs with the nasal cavities. The ganglionic cord that comes from the left side is called lunar and the ganglionic cord that proceeds from the right side is hot, solar. 
these two nervous cords are graciously knotted in the coccyx. When the solar and lunar atoms of the seminal system make contact in the triveni next to the coccyx, the kundalini awakens the serpent of brass natchash. The sexual act among initiates, male and female, has only one objective, that of establishing a contact of opposite poles in order to awaken their kundalini. With the sexual contact, the mercury of secret philosophy multiplies, the seminal liquor increases. When the end seminus is not ejaculated it is transmuted into seminal vapors. These vapors, at the same time, convert themselves into energies and are bipolarized into positive and negative. The positive are solar forces, the negative are lunar forces. These solar and lunar energies rise through the pair of sympathetic cords that are known as the two witnesses Ida and Pingla. The medullar channel has an internal orifice that normally is found closed in common people. However, the seminal vapors open up this orifice so that the sacred serpent of brass, Natchash, can enter there within that medullar channel. It is necessary to warn the Gnostic Rosicrucian brethren that they must learn how to polarize the sacred fire of the Kundalini. Some devotees eat meat every day and drink alcohol, with the pretext of working in the great work they pleasurably enjoy lust, they bestially enjoy carnal passion even when they do not waste their end seminus. Therefore, the outcome of this is that these devotees totally polarize the fire within the chakras of their lower abdomen and lose the happiness of enjoying the ecstasy of the lotus of 1,000 petals. Such a lotus flower is found situated in the pineal gland, which is the crown of saints that shines over the head of the great initiates. The lotus of 1,000 petals converts us into masters of samadhi, ecstasy. The work in the laboratorium oratorium is a true mystical ceremony that must not be profaned by animal desire or by sinful thoughts. Sex is the sanctum regnum of the temple. Before entering the sanctum sanctorum, purify your mind from any kind of impure thought. Esoteric ordeals slash trials. The initiatic ordeals or trials are enveloped in the arcanum eight. Each initiation, each degree has its ordeals. These initiatic ordeals become tougher each time, in accordance with the initiatic degree. The number eight is the degree of job. This sign, this number, signifies trials and pains. These initiatic ordeals are performed in the superior worlds and in the physical world. Eighth card of the tarot. A woman with a sword in her hand, facing the scale, or balance, of cosmic justice appears in the arcanum eight of the tarot. Indeed, only she, the priestess, can deliver the sword to the magician. Thus, an initiate, the priest, without a woman cannot receive the sword. There exists the Eve Venus, the instinctual woman. The Venus Eve, the noble home woman. There also exists Venus Urania, the woman initiated into the great mysteries and finally. We confirm the existence of the Urania Venus, the female adept, the woman that is self-realized in depth. The Flaming Fire The Flaming Fire opens the seven churches of the Apocalypse, seven magnetic centers of the spinal medulla. We conquer the powers of the earth with the first center, situated at the level of the sexual organs. With the second center, situated at the level of the prostate slash uterus, we conquer the waters. With the third center, situated at the level of the navel, we conquer the universal fire. With the fourth center, situated at the level of the heart, we conquer the air. The heart is the sanctuary of Sapphira, the mother of the Sephiroth, the divine cosmic mother. With the fifth center, situated at the level of the larynx, we receive the sacred ear and dominate. The Akasa with which we can preserve the physical body alive, even during the great cosmic nights. With the sixth center, situated between the two. Eyebrows, we conquer the magnetic center of the Father. Then we become clairvoyant. With the seventh center, situated in the pineal gland, we receive the polyvoyance, the intuitive sight, the ecstasy. The equilibrium of the scale. The woman of the eighth arcanum of the tarot has in one hand the scale, and in the other, the sword. It is necessary to equilibrate the forces. 
It is necessary and urgent to absolutely sanctify ourselves and to practice the Arcanum AZF. The forces of a man and a woman equilibrate themselves with love and wisdom. The double cross of the pentacles of Pythagoras and the wheel of Ezekiel are pentacles that represent the eighth arcanum. Venus equilibrates the works of Mars. Mercury equilibrates and performs the works of the sun and of the moon, above in the macrocosmos and below. In the microcosmos man. The works of the sun and of the moon, the man and the woman are equilibrated by the mercury of the secret philosophy, the N. Seminus. A yogi, or a yogini, cannot self-realize themselves without the Arcanum AZF, therefore those who want to exclude the Arcanum AZF from their whole yoga are violating the law of the Eighth Arcanum. They are the failures. Old Saturn balances thundering Jupiter, the father of all gods. This is the law of equilibrium. Arcanum 9. In this lesson, we will study the ninth key of Basil Valentine in the illustration of Viridarium Chimicum. The ninth key represents old Saturn falling and the goddess moon victoriously rising. Saturn is the lead, and the moon is the silver. The terrestrial atom, the psychological eye. It must fall and die so that the atom Christ can be born within us. We need to transmute the lead into gold. The lead of our personality must be transmuted into the gold of the spirit. The moon Mercury Sophic, the end Seminus, must rise and return inwardly and upwardly. To disincarnate signifies to perpetuate error. The psychological eye, the terrestrial atom is born millions of times, in order to satisfy desires. Terrestrial births are the perpetuation of ignorance. To be born in spirit and in truth signifies death for the terrestrial atom. The atom Christ is born from the seed. The grain, the seed, needs thelema, willpower, in order for the superman to heroically germinate. The birth of the superman is not the outcome of evolution. The superman does not need to evolve to attain perfection as is assumed by many students of occultism. Evolution is simply the movement of the universal life according to the concepts of time, space, and movement. All possibilities are contained within the evolving nature, thus, many become very good and others very bad. However, the superman is not the result of any sort of evolution, but the outcome of a tremendous revolution of the consciousness. Adam Christ is so much different from the terrestrial Adam as the lightning is from a black cloud. Lightning is born from a cloud, yet it is not a cloud. Lightning is the super man, while the cloud is the man. To be born is a sexual problem, the path is sexual transmutation. A rectangle appears in the ninth key, this represents the four elements of alchemy. By carefully studying this rectangle, we discover a double circle that wisely symbolizes the mercurial matter with its two properties, generation and regeneration. The double circle contains three serpents that emerge from three hearts. Indeed, we need to work with mercury, sulfur, and salt in order to raise the metallic serpent upon the pole. The Adam Christ is born in us only by working with the prima matter, mercury, sulfur, and salt. The phoenix bird that is born from its own ashes stands upon the double circle of mercurial matter. We need to become imitators of this mythological bird, however, this is only possible when we work with the grain. The eagle of volatility is the terrestrial atom that is dominated by the crow of putrefaction. The moon goddess carries upon her head a white swan. We must whiten the crow with sexual transmutation until transforming it into the immaculate swan of ascension. The entire symbolism of the great work is enveloped within the ninth key. No one can work with the Sephirothic tree without being an alchemist and a Kabbalist. The wise men of the ninth arcanum must search for the treasury within the ninth sphere. It is necessary to study the explanatory statements the principles and methods of the science of Kabbalah and to work with the seed. Practice without theory cannot exist. The Ninth Sphere An occultist sentence affirms that one can only depart through the same door that one has entered. We departed from Eden. Eden is sex in itself. 
Therefore, only through the doors of sex can we enter into Eden. The fetus, after having accomplished its entire process of gestation, arrives at the moment when it must depart through the same door that its seed germ entered. This is the law. The physical body of the human being is the outcome of nine months of gestation within the maternal womb. By means of philosophical analogies we also deduce that the human species remained within the maternal womb of the divine cosmic mother Isis, Ray, Sibylles, Mary, Adonia, in Sabertha, etc., gestating for nine ages. In the authentic initiation, this return to the point of departure is nothing more than the descent into the ninth sphere, which is a test of action for the supreme dignity of the great hierophant of mysteries. The flaming forge of Vulcan is found in the ninth sphere, sex. There, Mars descends in order to retemper his flaming sword and conquer the heart of Venus, the Venusian initiation. Hercules descends in order to clean the stables of Augeas, our lower animal depths. Perseus descends in order to cut off the head of Medusa. The psychological eye, or the terrestrial atom, with his flaming sword. All of the great masters of humanity such as Hermes, Buddha, Jesus, Dante, Zoroaster, etc., had to pass through this utmost test. The following phrase is written upon the frightful threshold of the ninth sphere, which does not grant access to profaners blasciate Agni Speranza Voi Ch and Trait. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. The Zohar emphatically warns us that within the depths of the abyss lives the Adam Protoplastus, the differentiating principle of the souls. With this principle we have to dispute victory to the death. This fight is terrible, brain against sex, and sex against brain, and what is even more terrible and more painful is heart against heart, you know it. The sign of the infinite is resplendent within the heart of the earth. The sign of the infinite is the holy eight. In this sign the heart, brain, and sex of the genie of the earth are represented. The secret name of this genie is Chamgam. The sign of the infinite is in the center of the ninth sphere. Earth has nine atomic stratums, and the sign of the infinite is found within the ninth stratum. The nine initiations of minor mysteries gradually corresponds with each one of these nine stratums. Each initiation of minor mysteries gives access to each one of these terrestrial stratums. Therefore, only the ones who have attained the nine initiations of minor mysteries can reach the heart of the earth. Each terrestrial stratum is guarded by terrifying guardians. Secret paths lead the disciple towards the heart of the earth. The double vital current of the genie of the earth is represented in the sign of the infinite. The double vital current sustains and nourishes the entire planet earth. Thus, we, all the living beings, are organized upon this divine archetype. A divine atom exists in the center of the sign of the infinite. The nine spheres of atomic vibration are concentrically focused within this atom of the genie of the earth. The holy eight glows resplendent with glory within the center of the earth. In the center of this holy eight the central atom is found, which is where the nine spheres of universal vibration are focused, that is the law. Kabbalistic Traditions Kabbalistic traditions tell us that Adam had two wives, Lilith and Nahima. It is stated that Lilith is the mother of abortion, homosexuality, and all crimes against nature in general. Nahima is the malignant and fatal beauty. Nahima is the mother of adultery and passionate fornication. Any marriage in violation of the law is easy to recognize because on the day of the wedding, the bride appears bald. Since hair is the symbol of chastity for the woman, on wedding days of Nahima it is prohibited to display hair, thus, she instinctively covers her hair with the veil, as if she is trying to conceal it. Thus, the abyss is divided into two large infrasexual spheres. These are the spheres of Lilith and Nahima. The inhabitants of the sphere of Lilith do not have any hope for salvation, whereas the inhabitants of the sphere of Nahima still have hope for redemption. Sphere of Lilith here we find those who abhor sex, for example, monks, anchorites, mystics, spiritualists, people from different pseudo-esoteric organizations, etc. All types of infrasexual people hate sex and consider themselves to be highly superior to those of normal sexuality. 
all of the taboos, restrictions, and prejudices that currently condition the lives of people of normal sexuality were firmly established by infrasexual people. Infrasexual people mortally hate the Arcanum AZF. Nevertheless, they give to themselves special credentials. And therefore, it is not difficult to find homosexuality within many convents and schools that are dedicated to spiritualistic or pseudo-esoteric studies. All of the crimes against nature are found in the infrasexual sphere of Lilith. Sphere of Nahima. Nahima seduces with the enchantment of her malignant beauty. Adultery is the outcome of this fatal enchantment. In the sphere of Nahima, we find the delectable cruelties from the kingdom of infrasexuality. In the atomic regions of the infrasexual sphere of Nahima live the Don Juans, Tenarios, types of men and Donaines, the Madam of the Whorehouse, or rather the beautiful Hetiras, sometimes sweet and sometimes cruel, in others. If people of normal sexuality do not live alert and vigilant, they can convert themselves into fatal proselytes of these infrasexual people, since they dress themselves like saints, apostles, anchorites, etc. and believing themselves to be superior, they go and deceive the people of normal sexuality and convert them into their henchmen. Understand that those people of normal sexuality are those who have no sexual aberrations of any kind. Sexuality among people of Normal sexuality is in perfect equilibrium with the spheres of thought, feeling, and will. Those types of people do not abuse sex, nor do they have any type of sexual aberrations. The sphere of supersexuality is the sphere of internal illumination. Sexual enjoyment precedes the mystical ecstasy. Sexual sensations are transmuted into sensations of ineffable ecstasy. The age of mystical ecstasy is always preceded by the age of sexual enjoyment. Thus, the human lifespan of mystical ecstasy begins where the human lifespan of sexual enjoyment ends. After having attained the Venusian initiation, in other words, after the Adam Christ has been born within us, we must then extract the philosophical egg from the rottenness of the matter and deliver it to the Son of Man, meaning to transplant the totality of the sexual energies to Adam Christ. This is how he becomes absolutely strong. The path is named Transmutation and Sexual Sublimation. Whosoever reaches these heights becomes a master of Samadhi. The same energy that produces sexual sensations, when it is transmuted, then produces mystical ecstasy. Christ, Buddha, Hermes, Quetzalcoatl, and many other avatars were supersexual. The forge of Vulcan sexual energy is divided into three distinct types. First, the energy having to do with the reproduction of the species. Second, the energy having to do with the spheres of thought, feeling, and will. Third, the energy that is found related with the world of pure spirit. All of the processes related with sexual transmutation are possible because of the intervention of the vital body. This is the Arceus that elaborates the blood and the semen in the human organism. This is Vulcan that transmutes the seminal liquor into Christic energy. The vital body is the vehicle of the soul consciousness in the human being. The consciousness is the flame and the vital body is the wick. Vulcan exists within the microcosmos and within the macrocosmos, in the human being and in nature. The great Vulcan of nature is Eden, this is the etheric world. Cosmic Rhythms Any alchemist fledgling, after having been crowned, is getting away little by little from the sexual act. The connubial secret is more distant each time according to certain cosmic rhythms marked by the oriental gong. This is how the sexual energies are sublimated and transmuted in a continuous ecstasy. The alchemist fledgling that worked in the magisterium of fire in former reincarnations performs this laboratory work in a relatively short time. However, those who for the first time work in the great work need at least 20 years of intense work in order to enter into the second part for another 20 years in order to slowly withdraw from the laboratory work, a total of 40 years in order to perform the entire work. However, when the alchemist spills the cup of Hermes, the fire of the furnace of his laboratory is off and the entire work is lost. Mantras for Sexual Magic-E-Ah Oh Oh Do 
Ohai. Ohu o. Ohu oha eh kore. Now continue with the powerful mantras. Kalaka. Salasa. Zisar. Kalaka is the inner god. Salasa is the terrestrial man and Zisar is the astral body. These powerful mantras develop all of the internal powers. We have already mentioned the mantra Minri and its modifications, Inri, Enre, Onro, Wunru. Onra. See Arcanum 7. The alchemist must not forget any of these mantras. The Arcanum 9 of the tarot, the hermit is prudent and wise. Covered with the protective robe of Apollonius, which symbolizes prudence. He takes his support the staff of the patriarchs and illuminates himself with the lamp of Hermes, wisdom. The alchemist must always do the will of the father, he must be humble in order to attain wisdom and then, after having attained it he must be even more humble, more than anyone else. It is better to remain silent and die. While the sinful Adam is dying, the Adam Christ is sequentially being born. Thank you for